John, it's wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see you too. You stayed through nine. You left after ninth grade. Now pick it up from there, where you went, et cetera, and take us all to where you are now, where you're living, where you're working, what you're doing. Sure. So I left, I left day school in ninth grade and uh, went to Benjamin in North Palm Beach. Right. And I uh, finished high school at uh, Benjamin School in 1992. And from there, I went to Cornell, uh, where I studied government and political science. Uh, and then after four years in upstate New York, being the Florida boy that I was, I needed to go to California for law school to thaw out. So I went to University of Southern California for law school, uh, graduated there in 99. Uh, and for the last 21 years, I've been a uh, corporate lawyer. Uh, my practice has taken me from New York I was in New York for five years practicing. Uh, and then I moved to Washington, DC, uh, practiced here for another four years and then started traveling uh, with my practice. I lived in London, Paris, uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Um, and now about uh, seven years ago, moved back to DC where I live with uh, my wife and my 13 year old daughter and 10 year old son. So where are you living now? In Bethesda, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. Where? Bethesda, Maryland. Bethesda. I used to date a girl. You know, I went to the University of Maryland. <laughs> so I, I, remember, that <laughs> I remember the stories you used to tell me about facing Wilt Chamberlain when you were at the University of That's Maryland. That's right. Uh, and I have a basketball story I'm going to remind you of. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, have you been with the same firm, John? I was with the same firm for about 10 years. And then 10 years ago, I went uh, to a finance company. I'm now the general counsel of Oxford Finance in Alexandria, Virginia. We are a venture lender. Um, we lend to healthcare and life science companies. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's a, it causes me to do a little bit of a uh, balancing both finance and business at the same time. Okay, all right. See, how old are you now? Uh... I'm 46. Well, you're a young man yet. You're a young man. I have 46, you but I, I got to tell you, in these 20 years that I've been working, honestly, not, I, I don't want to exaggerate. So I'll say not a month goes by where I don't come across a vocab word that <laughs> I learned in eighth and ninth grade. My wife has a master's in English, and she will ask me what words mean, and I will know from the vocab test. You still have them, huh? <laughs> she'll, she'll ask me the meaning and the spelling. She won't ask me the pronunciation because being an I, you know, I still you know, pronounce omnipotent, omnipotent, ubiquitous, ubiquacious, just to learn how to spell them for those tests. <laughs> but I know how to spell them and I know what they mean. And you knew when you walked in there Friday morning, you were gonna have to know them, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Or, wait, let's see, I'm trying to think. I used to give the vocabs on Monday. Monday. I remember it well because one day during PE, you were teaching tennis, and I had taken the vocab test that Monday. I had not studied on the weekend. I had done very poorly. But at PE, we're sitting on the benches, and I was talking about the Dolphins game, and I knew the voice, and it just came behind me, and you said, next week, maybe skip the Dolphins game and study your vocab. <laughs> See, we used, you, I was still giving it on Monday. Yeah. But a couple of years or so after that, one of my girls, and I forget her name, she came in and she said, Mr. Greco, I have a suggestion. She said, you know, when you give that vocab on Monday, that ruins our weekend. 100%. Give it on Friday. Give it on Fridays. So I asked the class how many want, they all wanted to do it on site. We've been doing it on Friday ever since. <laughs> thinking myself that no one in our class ever thought to ask that. <laughs> So, okay, so you're living in, uh, do you, uh, you ever get out to College Park? Oh, yeah. I go out there for, uh, for football games. My wife is a University of Michigan uh, graduate, and I'm, uh, you know, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, so I'm a Buckeyes fan. So okay. now that Maryland's in the Big Ten, we go out there for a lot of the games on the weekends. Do you uh, watch any turf basketball? Oh, you, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been to a couple of those games. I've been to the Terps-Duke game. That's a great, you know, they, now they have a small arena here. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, John, anyway, you look great. Thank you. you look great. Your family, are, are they in school? They are. 
my 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 uh, well, my two kids right now in COVID, they're doing um, uh, dis, you know distance learning. They're doing it by video. Uh, they go to Georgetown Day School here in DC, um, and they're loving it. They're they're loving it, and you know one of the you know silver linings of us all being stuck at home now is I get to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with them every day. So oh, that's great. I regale them with stories from Palm Beach Day School. I I talk about you know the vocab tests that we mentioned. I can I can still remember the bust of uh, in Mrs. Bayless's room with uh, Pythagoras. Um, yeah, I see Barbara's giving a laugh. She knows. <laughs> you um, every now and then throw some little quizzes at your kids. See how they do on the pronouns if they remember pronoun usage. Remember how many quizzes if, or, or oral quizzes we had on those? Just put down the answer real quick. <laughs> Just this week my wife came into our library and was looking for something. And I said, what are you looking for? And she said, I'm looking for your grammar book. I still have my Werner's grammar your book. Warner's, your Warner's. And she went to pick it up because she said our daughter was asking if something to be a simile, does it have to use like or as in order for right. metaphors and similes? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what she was looking at. That was just two days ago. Yeah. So listen, when you were in eighth grade, where we do, I think we were, you were writing your educational autobiography, the 5,000 word paper. Yep. And in ninth grade, you did the edge, the character sketch. That's right. Who did you do yours on? Do you remember? I did mine on my mom. On your mom, on your mom. Okay. You still have it? My mom does. Oh, she does? Good, good. Did your kids she, ever do it? Still, and she still remembers when we did the, the speech part where we did the one, three, five, seven, 10 minute speeches. Oh, the 10 minute speech. Do you remember your 10 minute speech? I do. I did the 10 minute speech on Iran. I can remember all of them. I did the first one minute speech on the Kansas Jayhawks, the three minute on the Los Angeles Lakers. And then you told me no more basketball. Uh, and then the five minute speech, I actually, it was, that was the one where you had to bring in the person you were going to speak about. Yeah. So I did that one on my mom and brought her and she still talks about that. Yeah. You know, that speech course, I get more feedback on that. People who have told me that they, because the way I, you know, we used to do it in ninth grade, but, but so many of our kids started leaving after eighth. So I said, let's move it back to eighth grade. So they have the benefit of the speech course. And so many come back and say how that has helped them because most of our kids were going to be in a position, they're going to have to be speaking in public. I hope anyway. <laughs> you know, it helps in everything. It helps with wedding toasts. It helps. It actually, you didn't just help me. You helped my family. My mom and my dad learned how to be better public speakers from the practicing that I had to do. And my mom will still quote me, quote it to me to this day. She'll say, remember Mr. Greco said, there's nothing to be nervous if you're prepared. That's right. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Listen, let me ask you this. Do you remember... You're Julius Caesar's. Friends, countrymen, lend me your ears. Yeah, did you? 75 oh. lines, you remember? In Cyrano oh. de Bergerac. <laughs> oh. My daughter just started reading Caesar last year, and I actually ordered myself a copy so I could read it with her while she was doing it in school. And it all came back. It does, but they don't, they don't, uh, they don't uh, practice memorizing uh, the scenes anymore. I know. That's... In education, you know, for a long time, John, a lot of this stuff, memory and uh, grammar, a lot of school, they don't do it anymore. They don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and there's a big sign I have above my room. I, I don't have it. I'm not teaching this year. I'm, they gave me the year off. Barb and I are interviewing famous alumni. But there's a sign that said, facts and skills are inseparable. Totally. I've had, you know, mothers, every year a mother will come in and say, well, I don't want my daughter having to do a lot of useless memory. And what I would do when I'd hear that, I'd push my chair back and I'd roll my pant leg up and I would expose my knee that was replaced by Dr. Hodge, a huge scar. And I said, do you have any idea how much memory Dr. Hodge did before he was able to put this knee. You can't do things unless you have memorized a lot of information. Facts and skills, they're inseparable. But no, 
What I learned in ninth grade at Palm Beach Day School, and I say this all the time, I learned more in ninth grade of Palm Beach Day School than I did in any single year of any a level of education, college, law school. What I learned in ninth grade from you, from Mrs. Bayless, from I, Mrs. Mrs. Bayless, Bayless, I know you learned a lot from her. <laughs> oh, I still know A squared plus B squared equals C squared. <laughs> And Barbara's doing the same job. She's yeah. doing the same job with her classes, believe me. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of, um, it's, um, but a lot of the things are changing, John. As I said, many schools, I have kids coming in who transfer other schools and, you know, well, how much grammar have you had? We haven't had any. You know, they say, well, you don't need it. You'll pick it up and read. Oh, yes. How are you going to write if you have no idea? As far as what a sentence is, <laughs> there's just no way. And the books we read, I just don't see, I even see it with the people I work with, the younger associates, you know, if I make a reference to an albatross, they have no idea what I'm no referring idea. to. You know, they, they, they don't, they haven't read. If I say ignorance is bliss, you know, Morris, you know, again, they, 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 the great books that we read, what I don't think we do it in eighth grade. Were we still doing great expectations? We were did we did Great Expectations. We did uh, Lord of the Flies. We did 1984. We did Guns of Navarone. Guns of Navarone. Did you do the Count of Monte Cristo? Yep. You did that in ninth, I guess. Or I remember we all we did the. I remember with Mr. Bayless, we would do the the one in, once in Future King. Right. Right. Um, but you know, I remember the thing. Reason I remember Guns of Navarone so well is. Uh, again, Adam Wilson and I were the two kids in, we were the two boys uh, in the A class and you assigned us Guns of Navarone and neither of us read it. We <laughs> waited till the night before and we decided to rent the movie. And I went over to Adam's house to watch the movie. And this will date me. You know, the VHS tape broke. <laughs> and Mrs. Wilson tried to figure it out, couldn't figure it out. My dad came and picked it up, picked me up, brought me home and said, what happened? I said, I was supposed to read this book. I didn't read it. He said, we're going to stay up tonight. You're going to read the whole book. Oh my. I stayed up that night. I read the whole book. The next day, Adam and I took the test. Because I had just read it, I got a 98 on it. Adam got a 30. <laughs> and I remember he came to you and he said, it's not fair. John read the book last night. <laughs> and the look you gave him when he said, it's not fair. John read the book. I'll never forget that. I liked Adam, you know, Adam had, uh, he was something, wasn't he? Have you ever stayed in contact with any of these kids at the time? You know, because of Facebook, we actually do stay in touch. Do so you? I'm friendly with, you know, from my class, you know, uh, uh, the, the Peters sisters, Megan and Amy, it, yeah. um, Chris Feinberg, Hunter McIntosh, you know, we, I, I, you know, not, not, but just on Facebook, seeing postings, see how they're doing, see how their families are doing. It's a nice way to stay, especially for someone like me that doesn't live down there anymore. Right. I know my brother sees a lot like, you know, Matthew Ferguson and Justin Lazara and all of them. Now your brother's an attorney. Is he with a firm here in town? He's with his own firm. He and his wife have their own uh, practice. Oh, they have uh, a practice. Yeah. And their son, my nephew, is a first grader now at, at, at Palm Beach Day. Yeah. Yeah, my God. It seemed like just yesterday, John, and here it is. I can't believe I've been here this is 52 years teaching here and then 10 in public school, 62 altogether and the names and everything. But there are some that I never forget. You're one of them. You're one of them. Uh, Adam Wilson's one of them. <laughs> Adam's one of them. Uh, he ended up, the last I heard he was teaching at Twin Lakes or one of the schools here. Yes. He's, a, he's, a, he's a teacher down there. He's still teaching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, last I saw, yeah, he's, a, he's an arts, arts teacher down there. Yeah, yeah. Adam Wilson. Uh, yes, it just seemed like yesterday. So anyway, but let me ask you this question, John. Um, are you worried about our country? You know, I have a, I think because of my background, I have a new unique picture on it. You know, when all of this stuff first started to happen with COVID and the shutdown and everything, I became a little um, worried. And I started to, you know, we didn't go out the house. We ordered in food. I was worried we we're gonna not gonna have enough food. 
So I started, you know, almost uh, um, rationing what we would eat, what we would do. And I called my uncle at one point and I said, you know, how do you know when to stop rationing, when to eat? Because he had gone through a revolution in Iran and he had been in hiding in Iran. And he said to me, you know, the best time to get food to eat. And I said, I don't know, early in the morning when the grocery stores have the food. And he said, no, three o'clock in the morning. What time? Three o'clock in the morning. I said, how is that the best time? He goes, because that's when you can go to the dumpsters and find the food before the animals get into it. He's like, you don't need to worry about rationing. This country is going to be fine. You're <laughs> overreacting worrying about it. <laughs> you know, we've gone through this. We go through ups, we go through downs. But, you know, I really believe, you know, right now it's a pretty divided country. Right. But I hope, I have hope, I, you know, now that I'm working at home, I can hear what my kids are studying in school. Just today I heard my son, they're talking about the civil rights movement. My daughter, they were reading, they're reading an autobiography of, of Justice Ginsburg. This, gen, this new generation gives me hope that we'll get back on the right track. When I lived in Abu Dhabi, I remember one time I had a colleague there who had dual citizenship between Swiss, uh, Sweden and the United States. And it has just so happened that one day he gave up his US citizenship for tax purposes. He just became a Swedish citizen. It happened to be the day my parents came to visit us in Abu Dhabi. And I introduced this colleague of mine to my father and I said, this is my colleague Kai. You know, by the way, he just gave up his US citizenship today. And my father, who's not you know, prone to social niceties with his fingers, started pointing him in the chest and said, are you stupid? <laughs> and the guy was taken aback and said, why? He goes, all those people who burn the American flag in the street, if you gave them a passport, they would kiss it. <laughs> the United States is the greatest country in the world. And I think sometimes you guys step out of the United States for all the problems we have. It wasn't until I lived overseas and I lived in Abu Dhabi and I lived in the United Arab Emirates that I realized this country is still the greatest country. You yeah. still have an opportunity to move up. You have the opportunity to come here. And if you work hard, now there are certain barriers that we're still trying to get out of the way. Yeah, but the oh, hope absolutely. is there. Right. And I think, uh, when I do get too depressed, but I think, I think most of the, the majority of the people have your attitude about this country. We, yeah. We've done a lot of bad things. We're doing bad things. Our, our racial history, of course, all, we understand that. But it, when it comes down to it, I think it's the best. <laughs> and I think most people realize that and won't let anything happen to it. I hope not, John. <laughs> the hope, it's the hope of the young people. It's seeing the way you know, every generation, you know, my generation, I think there was a little bit less racial animosity because as we grew up in a more homogenous society, and I see it with my children in terms of LGBTQ rights, they are just much more open. It doesn't phase them. You know, they've got kids in their classes that have two moms or two dads, and it is not a, oh, it's, it's yeah. you know, yeah. the same way we would look and say, oh, it's a mom that's got blonde hair and a dad who's got black hair. It, it wouldn't, right. wouldn't register. As they say in uh, literature, the zeitgeist, I, the spirit of the times, I think it's among the young people. And that's where the, that's where the hope lies, as you said. <laughs> hope for these young. John, it's been wonderful. It's, it's been, been wonderful. great talking with you. Too. I'm still mad at you for not giving me a call when you're in town. And you got to promise me the next time you're in town, you're going to give me a call so I can take you out to lunch or dinner. I promise. Okay. You promise? I promise. promise. Good. Great to see you, John. Great seeing you too.